Hey guys, Rishi here. How are you? So excited to be back with you guys to talk a little bit more about perfectionism. If you didn't get to see my previous video, The Eight Ways We're Making Ourselves Sick by Perfectionism, definitely encourage you to check it out. Thank you to everyone who watched and who commented and shared about how you identify with perfectionism. One of you asked if we would do a follow-up video with some resources and information about how to actually overcome perfectionism. So this video is the eight simple steps to overcome perfectionism. Number one, be aware of your motivations for perfectionism. When you're finding yourself being perfectionistic, you can begin to ask yourself, what do I wanna be motivated by? What's really important to me? And I'm gonna give you an example. So recently, um, I was posting a music video on my channel and it was time to post the video, but I realized I wasn't gonna have time to make the perfect thumbnail for the video. And so at that moment, I had to ask myself, what's really important? What do I wanna be motivated by? I can be motivated by the fact that I really want to communicate the message of the music and just post the video without the perfect thumbnail. Or I can sit there and basically obsess over making the perfect thumbnail because I'm more motivated by my insecurity of what my viewers are gonna think if my thumbnail isn't perfect. So I chose to post the video instead of getting hung up on trying to make the perfect thumbnail. Number two. Recognize that ideals are directions, not absolutes. So I'm pretty sure if you're watching this video, you're someone who has big dreams, big goals, big plans and ideals. And that's a really good thing. We can have these ideals that we wanna reach, but if we are so tightly attached to our ideals that they become absolutes and we're not flexible at all, then when plans don't really go exactly the way we want them to, we can become extremely discouraged and probably just give up. So keep your ideals, but hold them with some flexibility because when they begin to discourage you instead of inspire you, then it no longer is helpful. Number three, respect and love yourself. In our previous video, we talked about how perfectionism is self-abuse of the highest order. And so the best way that we can begin to overcome perfectionism is to do the opposite, which is practice self-love. I know that this is so much easier said than done, but I think that at the core of self-love and self-respect is just being kind to yourself. If you're um, having a moment of perfectionism and you're not being kind to yourself tell yourself something very kind you know like oh you know honey you're doing the best you can you are enough you are lovable and um, if this isn't perfect it's okay you're gonna be okay if you are interested in learning more about how to cultivate self-compassion I have a video on my channel Rishi Cup TV uh, where we talk about how to cultivate self-compassion according to Brene Brown in her book, The Gifts of Imperfection. Number four, focus on the big picture. Are you someone who focuses on the tree instead of the forest? I don't just focus on the tree. I spend hours and hours fo focusing on the little acorn in the tree. <laughs> The 80-20 principle is something that has been extremely helpful for me in looking at the big picture instead of getting caught up in the details. And the 80-20 principle, if you are not familiar with it, says that 20% of the tasks that you do are high value tasks because they contribute to 80% of the outcome. So let's cut ourselves some slack and start focusing on those 20% high value tasks. Number five, focus on what can be done. The past can't be redone. And even though we can plan for the future, that's something we also cannot 100% control. So if you're finding yourself obsessing over things that have already happened, or trying to make the perfect plan for the future, this can be um, signs that you're getting really perfectionistic and it's time to 
let that go and be in the present. Number six, delegate and let go. Now I know for some of us it's hard to let go and rel relinquish our control and let other people help us. Remember only 20% of the tasks are high value tasks. And so that means it's okay to let other people help us and, and delegate tasks and responsibilities if you can to other people. Number seven, enjoy the entire process. If you're not enjoying the journey, it's just not gonna be worth it. So you've definitely got to ask yourself, am I enjoying the process? And if the answer is no, then maybe the process needs to change. Our eighth and final step is celebrate victories and progress made. If you are living, then you've made progress and you've had victories. So instead of constantly obsessing over what you haven't done and what's still not good enough, take a moment and acknowledge what you have done and where you have made progress. Well guys, that's it for today. I really hope that this information was helpful to you. If you want to learn more, this information was resourced from an article um, written by Celestine Chua, who is a life coach and founder of Personal Excellence, which is a blog and she's also a YouTuber and she goes really in depth into perfectionism and she actually has a three-part series which helps you identify if you're a perfectionist, the downsides of perfectionism, and how to overcome perfectionism. So if you felt like you still need more, we will link all her information down below. And also make sure you subscribe here at Psych2Go. I want you to comment below, celebrate, and share with me an era of your life that you have made progress. You know I'll be chatting with you guys down in the comments. Thank you so much again for watching and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Love you!